Hey guys, this is uh, just a quick tutorial which will show you how to um, map and program your LEDs using the Pack LED 64 card and uh, SPAT next. Um, for this example, we will configure the alternative uh, annunciator um, up here. And first what you want to do is you need to know what pin you connected that um, annunciator to your pack LED 64 card. Well either you do it when you actually wire everything up and you make notes of the um, of all the annunciators. But I found it it's it's quite a bit of work. So what I did is from the uh, um, from the website where you bought you um, pack LED 64 cards, you can download this little program here uh, where you can do all sorts of things. But especially you can control the brightness, and therefore you can find out which pin um, you have connected the annunciator for. Um, in this case, I know it's going to be pin. Well, I hope so. It's going to be pin 24. What we're going to do is pin 24, brightness, and then apply. And now we can see it's lit up. So now we know um, that annunciator is connected to pin 24 on our um, pack LED card. Right, we can just close that. And what I'm doing is opening SPAT next. Um, I'm running this in uh, Lockheed Martin's prepared volume 5 with the PMDG 737NGXU. Um, let me open this button next. There we go. Right. And here under panels, you should have your pack LED cards. <coughs> so for my overhead I use two cards, have them labeled as left and right and then you can see the um, different plates I already um, programmed. So here we're doing a new one. What you want to do is you're gonna go to add plate and depending on what LEDs you have, either it's a static or an RGB one, obviously here we're using a static LED. So we go there and ooh. oh it's over here now and then this window pops up so now you can label it so I'm gonna label it um, altitude al alternative is that right? no there we go we know it's a static LED and now we have to select the pin and we know it's pin 24, right? Twin 24, and then we add the pin. There we go. The next thing you want to do is to add a color. Um, it's a bit confusing because what it should really, uh, really mean is <coughs> it's not color, but either it's on or off, or it's basically just a different state. <coughs> So you can leave it like it is with color one, but because it's easier, I'm going to label is, uh, it as on. And we want it to be on permanent. You can use flashes. There are some other kinds you can do actually, especially for, the st for stuff like the um, cross feed valve or the wing and engine anti-IS valve, which go dim. No, when you activate it, they go full brightness and then they dim down once the valve stops moving. Um, you can do that actually with Spatnex as well but that's that's a different thing. Anyway, we name it to on, um, permanent, leave everything here and then you can select a color here but that's just for the user interface only so it's going to be just showing like here like that's blue and here's um, orange or yellow. So we could just select green but it doesn't really matter it will not change the color of your LED obviously there we go and to make it visible uh, make sure you check that uh, box over here and then you go okay 
that's it. And oh, I haven't configured that one yet. That's good to know. Um, now we have to. Where is it? Twenty-four, twenty-five. Well, now we have to find it. Is that the one? Oh yeah, that's the one. It does say um, played 46, heat left forward on because it's the same on the pack LED left on my other card. Uh, don't, don't get confused, it's, it's the same thing. Right, what we want to do then is go at event. And then this little window here opens. Ah, there's another window, but it doesn't really matter. And then pack LED right, that's our card, plate 46, even though it's a different name here, I know. And then you can select plate color, off or on, or it would be color 1 if we haven't changed it before. So we just leave it to off, go OK, and then you have this little window here. And now we have, we have to add a condition to tell Spetnex when something happens, we want that the color <coughs> or the annunciator goes to off. So we go to add the conditions. <coughs> this little thing opens. And then select data. Then this opens. And here you can basically filter. You've got FSUIP events, you've got local um, events, and uh, the PMDG uh, Next Generation 3 events. And then you just search for whatever annunciator that is. Oh, I have to... Uh, sometimes you have to... Because... Anyway, it doesn't matter. And then... No... Okay, hold on. Why does it not show it up here? I'm not sure why it does that sometimes, but you have to do it. Hmm. Okay, hold on a second. <laughs> um, why does it not show it? Hmm. Okay, hang on a second. Usually, or is it under favorites? I don't even know. That's the thing. When you when you do something over here and then you search for it, it doesn't show the um, the things you search for, and you have to cancel, and you have to go back again, which I don't really understand, to be honest. I don't know why it doesn't show it. It should be should be here. Um hold on. Um it I'm not sure if it's that one. Well, what you can do, we can just test it. Um, it should be. Let's test it. <coughs> I know it's yes, alternative. Maybe it's something else. I'm not really sure, actually. And then you have your, your values. Zero represents off, one is on. So when the annunciator in our simulator is zero, is off, then turn the LEDs off. And that's what we do. And then we do exactly the same again, but then we change it to on here. At the condition, select data, it's already um, selected here, just click OK. And then if it goes to one, one means on. So if the annunciator in our simulator turns 
on to 1, our LEDs will go on too. Right, let's see if that works because I'm not really sure to be honest. So if I turn it now this, there we go. And you can see the annunciator um, is working. And you can also see in the pack LED screen that it's turned on. Like so. There we go. Um, the same goes for any other annunciator on the overhead panel. Um, so basically, yeah, it's basically the same. Um, another way you can do is um, put, ah, that's a different topic. Anyway, um, that's how it is. I wish I could uh, maybe be descend. No, doesn't really matter. Um, that's how it is. You can also go here now and go to edit plate and on the on position you can edit it and you can say you want it to be a flash, for example. Um, same story, if I now turn that, it's flashing. Um, and you can do that with all the LEDs you have, um, but obviously for this instance it's going to be permanent. And that's basically how, how you um, how you program your annunciators. Um, I hope that's helpful. Um, I'm trying to do some other videos in the future as well regarding switches, rotary encoder, uh, encoders and rotary switches and stuff like adding delays and use custom um, configurations for stuff like the cockpit voice recorder um, because that's not simulated really by PMDG. It's in the simulator, but there is no bridge between the simulator and SPAT next to simulate that small LD, for example. Um, that's probably um, stuff for another video. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and um, yeah, thank you. Bye.